Okay, well, I'm going to start with uh, a really small number of slides, and I'll end with uh, a sort of how you can get your own uh, your own hat if you want it. So today, uh, I'm going to be talking to you about you know using using Linkerd or really any service mesh with GitOps, and specifically how we're going to handle dependencies with Flux. Uh, let's see if I can get my laser pointer to work. I can't. Great. Um, so who am I? My name is uh, Jason Morgan. I'm a technical evangelist with Buoyant. You can find me on Twitter, GitHub, or over on the Linkerd Slack. And it's my job to talk to folks about Linkerd and try and encourage you to use it. So uh, before I go into the main topic, what is Linkerd? It is a very lightweight, fast, and security-focused service mesh for Kubernetes. There's a bunch of good stuff that we can say about it in the slides that I'm not going to read out to you. Uh, but love for you to go pop in, check out the repo. We are a CNCF project. And yeah, we're used by a bunch of different folks. So just, uh, this is almost my last slide here. So let's let's talk about this real quick. Uh, when we think of, of GitOps, or at least when I first, when I first read about GitOps in like 2016 from a, a Weave blog, right? I thought, I really liked the idea of putting everything into Git and having it apply directly to my, to my Kubernetes cluster. Um, you know, but, but the thing that I, I figured out after using it for a bit is some steps need to happen in sequence, right? So we've got whatever code we're going to use to launch this environment. We have to bootstrap our, our Kubernetes clusters. Then we have to install like our GitOps tool if we're using something like Flux. Uh, we have to figure out how we're going to load in our secrets. So we're going to use something like sealed secrets or we're going to connect to another process that's going to load stuff into Kubernetes. Uh, or we're, we're finding a way to safely store secrets in our Git repo. Um, you know, then we're going to need to install a platform, right? And a platform is going to, or a platform, especially when you're using a service mesh is going to include some, some components that will actually change your applications that get deployed. So the stuff you have in YAML inside your Git repo is going to be, it's going to be different or mutated by that, by that platform, right? So our, our platform is going to need to be installed and ready before we deploy our apps, whether those are you know, just our normal apps or databases or whatever that that may be. So with that, I'm going to pop right into a demo. Uh, all right, let me see. Can folks uh, see my screen okay? Awesome. All right, so here I'm running a, uh, a K3S cluster via uh, a tool called K3D, which lets you spin up Kubernetes clusters on demand. Uh, right now I've got very little installed beyond uh, metric server and an ingress. And we're gonna go ahead and, and add Linkerd, add Linkerd's uh, visualization dashboard and add the, the flagger prog progressive delivery tool. So let's see what that looks like. And of course, first I'm gonna install Flux. So because it's a K3S cluster, we're just going to start out by, by validating that it actually works. So we're going to use the flux pre-check command. Right, all our, all our prereqs passed, which is good. Um, now we can go ahead and actually install flux. So it gives it a minute. The, the tool is going to go ahead and actually check that, that flux installed correctly. And you can see our, our containers popping up here on the right. All right, and that is finished. Uh, so now that we've done that, you know, I'm going to go ahead and use the Linkerd CLI not to actually do the install, but just to validate that this works on my cluster. So once again, we're going to hope for a bunch of green check marks that say everything is good, which we've got that. And now it's time to actually install install our platform. So Flux, for those that um, I assume most of y'all are familiar with it, right? But Flux creates a bunch of custom resource definitions allow us to manage our environment. So the first thing we're going to do is create a Git repo. So instead of using the Flux CLI, I actually put that directly in Git. So we're just going to take a quick look here. Um, we have a Git repository, which is that, that custom resource definition from, from Flux. And then we've got a, a, um, a repo URL, right, as well as the branch. Uh, we're going to go ahead and, and apply that to our Kubernetes cluster. So if I do down here, k okay, get git repositories. Right, I don't have anything, but then once I create this, we see that now I've got my, my GitOps repo. 
uh, where it came from and that it's it's now ready to actually be used. All right, so uh, so now that I've got that, I'm actually going to go ahead and, and install my platform. I'm going to kick it off, and then we're going to go in the YAML because this takes a couple minutes. Uh, so what this what this manifest has is three customizations. So let's go ahead and, and run a watch command here. Watch kubectl get customizations. We're just going to look in all namespaces. So what what you're seeing here is Linkerd is installing. Uh, but Linkerd, Viz, and Flagger, which are also customizations that got created all at the same time, are waiting because they've got they've got a proper dependency here uh, inside the chart. So let's look at the or inside the inside the YAML. So let's look at the the customization. See how we did that. So we're just going to peek up peek at the YAML that we just created or that we just applied, and let's see if I can make this just a tiny bit smaller. That still look legible. Awesome. So, um, so we've got a kind customization. It's called Linkerd. It's going to be in the Flux system. We give it a path, so it's just the path that that's in our repo. We can take a look at that that repo structure here in a minute. Um, we give it the name, right? Which which Git repo, which is the one that we just created. Then the the key thing, right? And so when I first started messing with Flux, I was really I was really keen to make this dependency chaining work. Uh, but I had I had a bit of a hard time until I until I dug into the docs and saw this health check thing. So when you're creating your customizations, if you take the time to put in a health check for each deployment or each thing that you're that you want watched right from that from that given customization, then then Flux can wait for it to be fully ready before it does the install. Right. So we we list out all the deployments, so proxy injector, identity, whatever else. Right. Basically, all these things that get created. And we just tell we tell Flux that they are part of the health of this particular customization object. Now I need Linkerd to install before I try and install the Linkerd dashboard, which we call Linkerd viz, right? So Linkerd viz I put here under spec this depends on field, and I say it depends on Linkerd to be installed, right? Now once Linkerd got healthy, right? So we see that Linkerd came to to ready true, right? Now Linkerd viz is going through and doing its install. Right, and then, then one more step, right? So if you caught any of this stuff last night, we used Flagger with Linkerd. So Flagger relies on the Prometheus instance inside Linkerd viz to install, right? Or to actually, to actually work. So we, we've, we've chained the, the Linkerd viz to Linkerd and the Flagger to Linkerd viz being completed. So again, with Linkerd viz, we have our depends on, we have the Git repository, and then we have the health checks to make sure that it doesn't install or nothing that depends on the visualization component installs until uh, until it's completed. We go look at at Flagger, uh, and we see the same same thing. We just put in a health check and say it depends on Linkerd viz. All right, great timing. Our uh, our Prometheus just finished, right? Which tends to be the long pull on the Linkerd viz install. Um, we have Flagger going, and we can drop it. All right, so uh, now we can just run our Linkerd check, you know, validate that the install is correct. It's going to go through, check the installation. It'll also go ahead and check any installed extensions. And then we can run a separate Linkerd viz check if we want just to validate that that's ready to go. Now what we're going to do is actually deploy an app, right? And so this app, as you'd expect, right? So remember from that, uh, let me put the diagram back on real quick. Right, so we've got we've got this ordering of things, right? So we had uh, we had our Kubernetes cluster deployed with with K3D. We had Flux installed via the CLI. Not actually using any secrets here. Uh, deployed our platform, and now we're going to go ahead and do do our applications. In this case, it's just the the Pod Info app. So let's get that out. Pod Info is created, and let's take a quick look at what that is. You know, so again, right, we just said that because we want it to use the progressive delivery, we just told it to depend on Flagger. Why are you saying Flagger's not ready? There we go. Oh, no. There we go.
We see uh, we see pod info installing. We can go ahead and launch our Linkerd dashboard. So we can see it coming up. Um, so because we use Flagger, there's some, some kind of interesting stuff going on. So let's let's just peek at the repo real quick. I still got I still got time, right? Yeah. Uh, so if we if we look at this repo, right inside inside um, our pod info folder here. So this is what we just applied with that uh, with that YAML, right? We've got a bunch of things from a canary, a front end, uh, a generator just to to create some traffic, an ingress rule. Uh, namespace, all, all the stuff that you'd expect, right? But what you, some things that I didn't create are a pod info service. Uh, and I also only created one deployment, right? A, a pod info deployment. But if I look here, KNS pod info. If I go peek around here inside this, inside this namespace, I've got uh, I've got a bunch of I've got a, I've got some new new deployments right specifically pod info primary which isn't specified anywhere inside my YAML right and if I do kgit pods right again in in my YAML right like I only define one container per um, per pod right um, but because I specified on the namespace that we want Linkerd to inject the proxy. Right, each pod has an additional container stuffed into it by Linkerd, right? But if if pod info had installed prior to the platform being ready, right, it wouldn't be appropriately injected, right? And same thing like Linkerd Viz. Once you install Linkerd Viz, it gives you some additional functionality in Linkerd, like the ability to tap traffic in between applications. If if we installed if we installed the proxy before tap was ready, we wouldn't have that functionality either. So I can go. I can go into my dashboard. I can look at pod info. I see, you know, all that stuff I want to see around, like success rate, request per second, latency by latency bucket. Um, I see my my pod info primary service. We can actually go in, you know, tap live traffic to that application. Um, see what endpoints are being hit. We can actually go peek in on some on some calls if we want. Um, sure. So we can get live traffic, but all this, you know, all this comes because, right? Like the the apps got installed in the appropriate in the appropriate time, right? And in the appropriate sequence. So I'm running ahead of schedule. So let's go ahead and show, uh, just because we can, let's show a blue green deploy. So, um, k port forward service slash front end all right so here we've got we've got pod info deployed right with its with its green background but we can then we can use the the flagger progressive delivery to get us uh, to get us a um, a switch from blue to green so let's do that So we'll go in, switch our UI color, and make a git commit. Sorry, give me one sec to get my API key off to the side here. All right, so we, we made a push. We can go over here. Uh, let's actually do this one. So we're just going to tell Flux to reconcile. Flux, reconcile, customization. Pod info. 
So it's going to see the change and then it's going to have Flagger go through the process of, you know, spinning up, spinning up pods inside the pod info namespace. So let's just do this. Watch. Well, actually, we've got that watch over here. Uh, yeah, so we'll see. We see now a new pod coming up, right? It's going to it's going to spin it up and then it's going to direct traffic to it based on that canary deployment. So if we do watch, well, actually, we can see this in the dashboard. So let me pull that back. Um, so now if we go look again at pod info, we can see that there's now front ends pointing actually at, at two pod info instances, right? So we have our generator sending traffic to our front end, which is pointing to pod info primary and pod info. They each now have members, right? And we can see from the traffic split, like how much traffic is going to one versus the other. So the, the flagger stuff was kind of just some extra to show you how that works, right? And, and some of that dependency stuff. But I hope the I hope the lesson you take away here is um, you know, as you're doing as you're doing GitOps, right, like the ordering matters and and so far Flux has made it really simple and straightforward to to chain those dependencies. So you can do your platform, you can do, you know, your applications, you can even do applications in sequence, right? Like if you need like, I don't know, your database there before the app starts up or whatever that is, you've got that depends on construct along with the health checks to get the um, to get the order you want. Now we see that this this background changes from blue to green and it's going to switch as it does that that traffic split. And so that's all, you know, Linkerd plus Flux plus plus Flagger, Flagger to get you this this kind of functionality. And then uh, provided this was interesting, um, if you're interested in checking out Linkerd, um, we've got a getting started guide. Um, we can go to linkerd.io slash two getting started to, to go through a, a demo to see how to set up Linkerd. And of course, if you get the chance, join us on Slack, uh, slack.linkerd.io. Love to hear from you and I'll be around in the chat to take questions.